What I found interesting, Wilf, is we saw everything snug up to really significant areas of resistance. We popped briefly above 3%, came right back off in a 10-year. We tested 259 in a two-year, which is currently the highest yield close going back to 2008. We backed off a bit. Dollar index jumped over 94, backed off a bit. Uh, I, I think that that Jay Powell really is doing a great job communicating, maybe the best communicator I've seen running the Fed, and I've been monitoring it basically since 1978. And I think that his message is reflected in the markets. I think the key tomorrow is going to be uh, whether we take out some of these key resistance levels. But if I was a trader, I would look at the response in most sectors, the way it moved right to the shore, almost got your toes wet, but then eased back a bit. I would think that when we come in tomorrow, if the 10-year isn't well above 3%, like above 303, that you'll see this thing ease off uh, as we move and distance ourselves from the Fed and then, of course, put the ECB and the European markets in the box. But they can have an effect that could distort what I was describing with regard to the post-Fed process uh, of mm. pricing in the fixed income markets. There's some good alliteration. Uh, and Peter Piper, uh, <laughs> Kenny Polcari will continue the theme. Uh, I, I, there was once upon a time, if the Fed had come out with this set of uh, things, yeah. the markets would have been down you know, a couple of percent. And so I think that says a couple of things. Number one, I think, I think Rick is right. He's got this, this kind of style and this way about him. I think Janet did too. But I think the problem is we were in a different time when Janet was Fed chair. And people, I think, were more anxious and more nervous. We've now, ever since Jay Powell's been there, we've been talking about this and we were talking about this potential hike now but it's for months economy, and months and months. Don't you think it's and, because it's so strong? And because the economy certainly has done better. The macro data points are better. I think people are getting more comfortable. I think Jay Powell said it right when he said that he, he maintains this kind of moderate pace, a steady but moderate pace. And so we didn't see that spike in, in Treasury yields. We didn't see it all of a sudden go to 305 or 310 like it did a couple of weeks ago when the market had a nervous breakdown. I'm getting the sense that investors in the market are much more comfortable with where we are. And unless you get a real spike in the macro data that it's going to continue to just kind of chug along. Dick, immediately after the hike, we did see a positive response for the banks. It felt like this could perhaps be a catalyst to kick the share prices into gear a bit. The KBW Banks Index was up about half a percent. It's slipped back now. It's pretty much uh, flat. Uh, is this or should it be a catalyst for the banks uh, to perform a little bit better? Or, or should we be focusing on another Fed event coming up in terms of a catalyst, which is the stress test results just uh, a couple of weeks away? Well, uh, I think the stress tests are certainly going to, uh, depending on what it says, could certainly be much more, uh, have much more impact on banks. I, I think the reason, uh, at least in, in my opinion, this was all signal. There was really no surprises in what the chairman said. There was no surprises really in the, in the words. And so I expected that they, that they would talk about four increases for the year. I expected there would be minimal impact on the banks because this is, was, was built in. And, and yeah. uh, whatever you, if, you, if you thought they would do what they had been communicating, they did it. And so why should there be any surprises? Do we think, Victoria, the thing that everybody's too comfortable? I mean, given what Dick and Kenny were just talking about, is there something to be said for kind of keeping markets and, and everybody on edge or no? Well, I think it's good well, for markets to be on edge a little bit, right? It's uh, the ability for them to um, have these press conferences at every meeting, I think, will actually be a good thing. Before, people like me would read the tea leaves when the minutes would come out after the fact and try to figure out what they were thinking behind closed doors. So I think this is going to be a good thing. We actually had a, a fear that there was going to be more risk to the dovish side um, coming out of this meeting. So the fact that things came out um, as expected, as everyone else has mentioned, I think that's why the markets are not having that big of a reaction to this. Tomorrow's ECB meeting, however, I think might have a more hawkish tone than what investors anticipate, and that might be where we get some reaction. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.